Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman doing the weekend update here on August 5th, 2017. Let's get uh, right to it with a little bit of a week in review. And then, of course, we're going to look at a number of products uh, during this update here that uh, do pose some great opportunities out there. Let's start with the S&P 500, which throughout the course of the week did absolutely nothing to define what absolutely nothing happens to mean. If you take a look at the SPX, it's uh, end of the week at 24.76. Now, take a look back at the previous five trading days. In fact, even if you go into think back on thinkorswim and you back up the date, and what I did is I backed up precisely one week from today. So here we are again on August 5th. I backed up to July 29th. Where were the S&Ps? Well, they were at 2472. We ended the week again at 2476. Wow, an astounding four point move. So we sold premium in the S&Ps. It worked. Okay, looking at expected moves. Now, for those of you that are unaware about expected moves, this is just the option data Okay, plotted into ultimately a chart. And the expected move is the range that the option market is expecting in any given week. The expected move last week, and this is something I want to cover right up front over here. So last week, what was the expected move? Again, we can look back specifically at what we were expecting for movement again last week by going into some end of day data and this is just a, uh, a piece of uh, back data that you're looking at now again from July 29th. We were expecting about a $21 move. Now, <clears throat> how much movement did we actually get? Clearly, we were well inside the expected move. Now, looking forward, one of the things that surprised me is given the fact that in the previous two weeks, we really haven't seen any volatility inside of the S&P 500. However, the marketplace sees something because if you're looking at these expected moves, what the expected moves just visually, you can see, all right, it's expecting, you know, this was about an $18 move here. We had, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of about a, you know, $20 move being priced in last week, of course, is about a $21 move. And again, this week, now I'm looking forward now, be clear, this is not like reviewing, looking forward, what does the market see? It's increased the risk, not massively over here, but by about $2, the expected move has increased. The reason that I find that interesting, so what the market's ultimately saying here um, for the week that's coming, we're expecting more movement than we've seen in the previous two weeks. Again, what does the market see? Is there news coming out and so forth? So, you know, I looked through the news announcements and so forth, and the news is nowhere near what it was in the previous week. So the market's obviously pricing in something that, you know, we're not necessarily seeing in terms of a news announcement, but I wanted to let you guys know that right up front that the expected move, again, surprisingly to me, when you typically, when you get, you know, two weeks of no movement, what the move tends to do is to actually contract, making it even more shallow, right? <clears throat> but in this particular case, there's been an expansion of volatility, uh, specifically in the SPX. Now, before I go any further, I wanna show you the NASDAQ, the QQQ, because in the QQQ, what we've seen, again, over the last two weeks is relatively no movement, however, in the previous week, we saw you know one wild day, but for the most part, the cues are unchanged in the entire week. I mean, you, you can't even make this stuff up. If you look right now where the cues are trading, trading one forty three sixty five, and we go back to the previous week of trade, they were trading one forty three eighty four. The cues in the entire week that we just went through, okay, the entire week here up until, of course, August 4th, we saw a whopping, you know, 20 cents of movement inside of the NASDAQ. So here, with absolutely no movement in the NASDAQ, we're seeing just this. 
the expected move happens to be contracting. How do we know? Well, visually, you can see the expected move from last week was larger than in the coming week. And this stuff's important. And why it's important, oh, right, there's a trade opportunity. Why is there a trade opportunity? You ask yourself, do you think that the NASDAQ is going to stay in this incredibly and relatively tight range? In fact, to compare and contrast, last week, we had about a $2 and almost 30 cent expected move, okay? In the coming week, we're looking at a $1.82 expected move. And I'm gonna show you a trade here in just a few moments regarding this. I most definitively, I wanna be a buyer of premium inside of the queues. I, I like the idea of buying premium over here and I don't necessarily need to be directional in essence to do that. <clears throat> so. For the most part, what I'm planning on doing is actually using a strangle. Probably one of the most straightforward, one of the first trades that anybody ever learns in options trading is the strangle. And what does it ultimately look like? And I'll take it over to a risk profile here. I'm just looking at the 145.50, okay? 141.50 puts, okay? 141.50 puts, 145.50 calls and it's currently trading for about a 41 cent debit. So why do I ultimately wanna be a buyer okay, of premium here? And the answer lies in the fact that, listen, when it comes to expected move, right, that move, which again, is just shy of about $2. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of about a buck 82 higher, okay? So it's about a dollar 82 higher or about a dollar 82 lower okay so that's the expected move ultimately that you're you're looking for this week and you're supposed to stay in that range about 68 percent of the time so if you go out and you buy this strangle okay and again if you take a look at the strikes of the strangle 141 50s 145 50s okay the 145 50s right on the edge of the expected move Okay, and we're just below the edge of the expected move on the puts. So the strangle, the way it actually plays out is I'm buying premium out here, I'm buying premium out here, I'm expecting a big move outside of that. If you look at the statistics of it, you know, what's your probability? It's about a one in three chance that we're actually going to move outside of what's expected. But however, if you look back historically speaking, and I'll just look back from, you know, from March to right now, you have almost 50% of occurrences of cracking outside of the expected move. The irony is in the last two weeks, we have not cracked outside of the expected move. And I want to make this abundantly clear in the last two weeks. Look at this. We're on the straight and narrow over here inside of the expected moves, right? The previous week, we did have a, a brief and fleeting moment right there. We cracked outside of it. The week prior to that, we, you know, huge outside of it. However, again, with the contraction of implied volatility, I think it's worth it to go out and to buy premium in there. So for me, again, I'm um, looking at the, uh, the 145.50, uh, 141 50 puts and that's just buying a strangle looking for the possibility of us cracking outside the expected move okay let's close that up for a moment let's move away from expected moves and let's just talk about the broader markets so again we see absolutely nothing occur inside of the SPX okay I'm gonna even turn off our expected moves we see nothing occurring in the SPX we see absolutely in fact less than nothing inside of the QQQ. However, have you been looking at the Russell? Because the Russell has broken lower over the last two weeks and it's a fairly steep decline. In this particular case, looking at the Russell, I just wanna look at it on a year to date on a percentage basis. The Russell starts out the year, rallies up, okay? Ultimately at this point, <clears throat> has already come in inside of the last about two weeks of trade. When I say it's coming in, okay, here we were up about 6%, now we're up about 3%. So we've had about a 3% decline inside of the Russell. Again, in comparison, we'll cruise over to the uh, to the spiders in this case. The spiders are up close to 10%, and this is year to date. The Qs are up 20% year to date. Okay, so there's, you know, defection, if you will, in the ranks 
of the Russell. Now, I'm not necessarily sure, like, oh, is that, is that to be concerned over here? Well, <clears throat> here's the interesting area of it. So again, we looked at the Qs, the, the strangle over there. We looked at the Russell kind of breaking lower. And now I'm going to look on a sector by sector of what's actually holding the markets kind of together for the most part. So even though we saw a kind of defection in the Russell breaking lower, go take a look at the financials. The financials exploded to the upside this week, okay, by an amount, uh, again, if you want to count the entire last two weeks of trade, they've exploded up to the upside. Uh, they're up 8% year to date, but it's almost a 3% incline in the last two weeks. The point I want to make specifically with the financials, here's a little bit of a longer chart, going back, of course, to the election to right now, um, the financials have now broken out to the upside. <clears throat> this, by far and away, is what is most definitively holding the S&Ps to the upside. Now, if you take a look specifically at this last week of trade, and I'll zoom into this, the financials have rallied, okay? However, you're seeing some big tech backing off. And this is where I think, I think a few people probably realize this, but everybody's got, you know, Apple fever right now, which I'll come to in a moment. However, you have Google, and again, I went back to a percentage year to date, you've got Google breaking lower. Just in the last two weeks of trade, it's up 24%, now it's up 17%. We, okay, are looking for follow through to the downside in Google. Let's go take a quick glance at Amazon on a percentage basis, big decline inside of Amazon. Again, <clears throat> since the earnings announcement, uh, this big kind of you know reactionary and really was a reversal, so we traded all the way up here, up about 43% year to date. Here we are, 31%. So when you're looking for <clears throat> big reaction, big reversals, you have Amazon off, you've got Google off. Okay, let's go take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft's off, although nominally, maybe 2% since its earnings announcement. However, Apple, hey, everybody here has got Apple fever, right? Stock explodes up 5%. <clears throat> Apple into itself okay, is really holding the NASDAQ higher. Now we'll come back to Facebook here momentarily, but Apple to itself this last week, if you're looking at the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ, as we mentioned a moment ago, the NASDAQ has just been completely and utterly flat. Again, we're kind of getting, for the most part, already seeing breaking down inside of Google. We're seeing a breakdown inside of Amazon for the most part, uh, mild selling inside of Microsoft. However, the fate of the world rests solely in Apple. In fact, Apple is what's been keeping the NASDAQ flat when the others are breaking down. Now, Facebook. Facebook is fading very, very slightly from the earnings announcement. Nothing considerable. It's relatively flat since its earnings announcement. It's kind of caught in between. And this is where I actually see the opportunity in the NASDAQ. That's why, you know, I'm looking at the idea of buying the strangle in the NASDAQ is because again, we're kind of getting defection in the ranks there of some key players. Now, how does that relate back to the financials? Okay. The financials are breaking to the upside. You've actually got a couple of tech stocks breaking to the downside and the S and P's are completely and utterly unchanged. I'll make something very, very clear. And I've said this a number of times before the XLF above the 25 level gives a clean shot for the S&Ps to 2,500, okay? And I'm gonna talk about, you know, the financials here because this is a sector you just, you have got to keep your eye on in this coming week. So the financials have broken out to the upside. They're above 25. Again, that would give a clean shot to the S&Ps to get up to what, 2,500, <clears throat> okay. But one of the stranger things going on inside of trade right now, and this is exactly what we want to look for, is the financials have been rallying, okay? And the bonds have been rallying. <clears throat> now, granted, the bonds did sell off on Friday. Come back to that in a moment. This is what I'm talking about when you're looking at relationships, and I've been watching relationships for, you know, two decades in the marketplace. Broken correlation over here. When bonds rally, and this is important. When bonds rally, that actually takes the percentage, the interest rates, effectively what? <clears throat> Down. Now, very, very important here. Bonds are actually moving higher. The interest rate 
is going down. As the interest rates, and I'm putting a percent over here for interest rates, as interest rates back off, that ain't supposed to be good for the financials. And if you go take a look at this, and this is, I'm looking at a lot of stuff here, and you know, hey, the good thing is you can rewind this. You can go look at the TNX, and the TNX is the 10-year treasury index. And again, it kind of peaked out here uh, July 7th and has been kind of degrading ever since. At the same time, and again, I use that, you know, July 7th, if you take a look specifically at the financials, do they seem impeded? Okay, interest rates are coming back down and yet the financials are rallying. Higher interest rates are supposed to be what has helped, classically helped, again, the financials. What are the financials really running on here other than fumes? And this is the question, again, they're breaking out to the upside because at this point, well, you know, Google's not looking that good, you know? Amazon's not looking that good. This is a classical case of, there's capital out there and people are throwing caution to the wind. They simply do not care. And this is where I've been pointing out, you know, in a marketplace, you're always looking for, again, it, you know, correlations that have been there for long periods of time, but the correlations that haven't been, you know, haven't been working lately. When I say people are throwing caution to the wind, let me be abundantly clear and give you an example that's just completely off, you know, from the XLF and the bonds just to uh, to prove a point over here. Um, again, this is one that's really got me watching because you have to recognize what funds and so forth are saying is, yeah, we don't even care right now. There's no valuation. There's no, there's no fundamentals behind this. There's definitely, you know, whatever technicals for throw it out the window, we'll throw caution to the wind. And as interest rates are coming down, forget it. We'll just buy it. Why are we buying the financials? Well, because we're selling Google. Oh, that makes perfect sense over here. When I say that they're throwing caution to the wind, I'll give you an example. There was a Argentina offered bonds this week and there was more demand. And again, this is just an example here and nothing to show you on the chart, but there was um, huge demand for the bonds in Argentina, which by the way, have defaulted you know, five times like in the last century, Argentina hasn't paid those bonds and they're paying next to no interest rate associated with that. So it's just an analogy of throwing caution to the wind, but I'll also show you, okay, HYG, <clears throat> if you look at HYG, what is this? This is junk, okay, it's junk. Why am I showing junk bonds right now? Because they're yielding about, well, 5%. Okay, they're yielding about 5%, and yet if you take a look at this, you know, over, uh, yeah, we'll just bring up a little bit of a longer period of time, over like five years, people are actually out there buying the junk bonds that are only yielding about 5%. Does that sound like a good idea? Okay, <clears throat> they'd rather own junk bonds right now than a company like Ford, which is paying 5.5%, okay? Granted, Ford stock is down substantially. Again, it's another sign of just there's complete and utter, like, it's not just complacency. You're getting to the point of stupidity when you're starting to look at, hey, the flow of capital into the markets is causing, all right, fund managers, institutional money managers, okay, to, th again, throw caution to the wind. The search for yield right now isn't just on, it's distorting everything that we know in markets over here. And that's what that real breakdown of correlation happens to be. So back to the XLF, I just enjoy showing people like, hey, completely throwing caution to the wind. Whatever you might think about this marketplace, okay, you, you're never going to convince me that buying junk bonds at, at basically a 5% yield is better than buying something like Ford, which has been knocked down throughout the course of the year and is yielding more in its dividends. I mean, it's, it's pure and utter chaos when you start to look at it. Anyway back over here to the XLF, it's bucking the trend of bonds. Am I ready to step up and short the XLF? I already have a short position inside of the financials over here. This is a much longer duration position. Nevertheless, this is the one to watch. Again, if the XLF starts to roll over along with technology, this is the, this is the turning point in the marketplace you want to look for. Okay. And that's the ultimate goal that I'm trying to really, you know, drive home over here is that Right now, you're seeing a stock like Google sell off. You're seeing a stock like Amazon back off here a little bit, okay? But as they're backing off, the money management is literally 
throwing caution to the wind and they're just buying the financials. Why? Because they're not ready to succumb to the idea that the entire market's going to come down. If we actually see a turn in financials, and again, I'll be very clear, if we see a turn to the downside in financials along with technology selling, then and only then have the markets actually snap back into correlation, in which case that could be some very, very serious sell side activity. As of right now, the financials just point to the S&Ps continuing to rally. Again, in sell side activity, if we see sell side activity in this coming week, you want to see financial selling off and technology ultimately selling off over there. What we're getting right now, I mean, hey, financials and Apple, okay, are the backbone of the entire marketplace, okay? If they turn, the market turns. I want to thank everybody for tuning in here to this weekend update at Theotrade. Join us all throughout the course of the week in Theotrade chat room. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.